support those. Deputy McBarry. I'm not in a position to... Uh, I think that will have to be tabled to the relevant minister and to, to the, uh, okay, and to the uh, minister for public expenditure and reform. I did see newspaper reports on the subject, but I'm not in a position Thank to... Thank you, Minister. Deputy McBarry. Thank you, Count Corla. Uh, Count Corla, uh, we would like to uh, add our voice to the points that have been raised in relation to the need for uh, a far more urgent approach and urgent action in relation to the case of Ibrahim Halawa. Um, the main issue that uh, I wish to, to raise uh, under this uh, questions on promised legislation, Count Corla, is the issue of the renewal of the financial emergency uh, legislation. Um, it's somewhat strange that financial emergency legislation uh, is being renewed uh, at a time when there is not a financial emergency uh, in, uh, the, uh, in the, uh, the uh, state. And this, of course, is legislation which underpins pay cuts and pension cuts for hundreds of thousands of public service workers. And it is also legislation which underpins the two-tier wage rates, um, the, the uh, lower rates of pay for new entrants to the public service, which is widely seen in society. Have you questioned, Deputy, because we can't debate the legislation? I do. I have a number of uh, questions, right. well, would you, would uh, Count Corley. I, I was just about to make the point that that is seen as, uh, the two-tier wages mm. is seen as a scandal, widely, a discrimination against young people. But on, on the issue of a number of questions, first of all, on the business committee, uh, uh, it was raised about the possibility of a debate in the House on this. Do we have any information as to if and when a debate is to be scheduled in relation uh, to this? Second question is, how do you justify emergency legislation at a time when the government and your own party has been talking up the economic recovery with election slogans such as keeping the recovery uh, going? And uh, the final question I would raise in uh, relation uh, to this is, do you not feel that there is a, um, a serious issue looming for the government here, I mean, you couldn't face down the water charge protests. You weren't strong enough to face down the bin charge uh, uh, protests. This is the FEMPI uh, legislation here. Uh, what makes you think that you'll be uh, strong enough to face down organised workers, uh, organised trade unionists, sections of the organised working class movement in this country, uh, uh, when you, so Barry. many people feel that this legislation should be ripped up. It okay, should be put you, in the bin. Thank you, Deputy Barry. Right? You're penalising no, young no, no, people. You, you need, we, can, You're penalising you young please? people, Minister, please. with new entrant rates of pay, which mean that, that young teachers will lose up to a quarter of a million in the course of Deputy a working Barry, career. Deputy Barry, can you please you, resume you, your you're seat? Pen, you're penalising... Deputy Barry, a, can you please who resume who your seat? Alongside, ...who are working alongside of older colleagues who started work before this legislation came in they're doing the same, same work. You're not in, the in same order at this point, Deputy Barry. They're, they're will you please, will you please resume your Yes, that, that's and all yes, very valid, but this is not the time or the place. Excuse me, this is not the time or the place for this debate. Will you please regard. resume your seat? But does the manager, Minister, uh, uh, not accept uh, well, would you, let, would totally you please resume? Would you please your resume people. your seat? And final question, Count No, you've asked numerous I'll questions at this stage. You should resume your seat. The idea that in a sneaky way this legislation it is, is, is to be placed in the library, and that is considered sufficient uh, that it's, it's passed by the House before previously having a, an opportunity to debate and to vote on this. Does the Minister not agree that it's totally undemocratic? This is not leaders' questions. In that regard? You are completely out of order, and you have taken time that might otherwise, that might otherwise be available to other deputies. Minister, very briefly on the specific questions. Well, first of all, I understand uh, Deputy Barry is a member of the Business Committee, so he, he ought to know himself what is transacting there. Uh, the, the situation is that you know, negotiations under the Lansdowne Road, Road Agreement have been pursued by the government. The vast majority of public service trade unions and public service workers have signed up to that agreement, which allows for the, which allows for the Smith, orderly Deputy restoration Smith, of Deputy pay Smith, under the FEMP arrangement. And as I order. indicated, that, that agreement Deputy will provide Smith, for 884 Smith, million sorry, of public Minister, pay. You are not in order. This is not a TV studio. Please restrain yourself. Please 
please, Deputy, I implore you to restrain yourself. Well, you can tear up all you like, but please resume your seat. Please resume your seat. Resume, resume your seat, Deputy, please. Minister, will you conclude? Yeah, I, I, indeed. In addition, I, I, the Minister of Public Expenditure and Reform has indicated that the government supports the orderly and negotiated unwinding of the FEMP agreement to end that, but it will be done in an orderly way, and the first item will be a public service commission which will look specifically at the issue that Deputy Barry raised, namely the difference in entrance pays uh, between those who, who were restricted in recent years. So you know, there is an orderly process here, and it allows uh, the government to manage our our affairs in a way that allows us to invest in badly needed public services, which has been a huge issue that arose in the recent general election. Thank you very and much, we have Mr. to strike that balance. Uh, Deputy, Catherine, Deputy Catherine Murphy. Deputy Ca on the same issue. Yes, okay. same, Sorry, issue. The same, same issue. Same issue. Well, okay, very briefly, Deputy Catherine. I'll take you. Extend this emergency legislation, this draconian anti trade union legislation, legislation that has introduced swinging cuts to pay pensions and conditions of employment to public services, without a debate in this House. All right. uh, we're supposed to have new politics, I thought, in this chamber. This right. is old politics. This is the government bulldozing through legislation without any opportunity to You've discuss it point. or to debate it or to vote on it. And I believe that we are entitled to well, debate and vote on this legislation today. Will you resume your... A very brief response... No, I'm, we're out of time. I'm sorry, Deputy. I'm, well, 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 can we let the Minister... Can you... Can you... Well, will you please, please... Will you, Deputy Boyd Barrett? Please, please. While the chair, while the chair is on his feet, you will. You, will you please? Will you please? Will you please restrain yourself? Minister, can we have a brief response, please? No. You know, the time is up. It's, it, there's no point of order on these matters. There's no point of order. Resume your seat. Please resume, resume your seat. Please resume your seat, Deputy. I'm asking you to... I'm asking you, please... Please, please, please resume your seat. This is a rather futile exercise. Please resume your seat. Please resume your seat. Please, please, please resume your seat. If you don't, adjourn, I'm afraid I'll have to adjourn the House. If you don't resume your seat, yes, uh, sit down. Please resume your seat. Please resume your seat. Please resume. No, I won't listen to what you're saying because the time is up. Please resume your seat. I'm sorry that the House is adjourned for five minutes. Just on that, if what is being said is that there is now definitely a debate being scheduled as opposed to the possibility of a debate being scheduled, that is a step forward. But the, the point here is, is, is not about the idea of having a token debate on the issue of the financial emergency legislation which will penalise workers, and especially young workers. It, it's not a point about having a token debate after the fact. The, the key thing here that is outrageous, and we want to register this point and we leave it at that, is that the government have the power to put through this legislation without a vote in the House. That is very wrong. And if we don't have the power to oppose it strongly in that way in the House, I've no doubt that trade unionists out there will oppose it very strongly on the picket lines if needs be. I'm trying to be helpful. Uh, it's what you're telling us, Keon Cora, that the government are prepared to defer the renewal of this legislation until after, the, until after the debate in the House. No, Is that not, what you're telling us? I'm not telling you that. But, uh, what are you telling us then? Because there's no to be perfectly there's honest, Keown Corla, a debate in a week's time or a fortnight's time is of very little value if the, if the legislation is already extended. And if young teachers, young guards and young nurses can't even pay for their rental accommodation All right, in this country, point. and if we still have, if we still have two-tier pay structure in those professions... Resume your seat now, where young, Healy, where, please. Resume your seat, Deputy Healy, please. Can we have a little bit of... Are prepared to defer the renewal of the legislation until after the debate. Do you